Well, good morning, everyone. What a blessing it is. We meet together this first day of the week and we celebrate together everything that God is doing. In our message series, What If It's True, we continue to go through many different places in the scripture where God is calling out what our identity is, how he made us to be, how he originally designed us. We come into alignment with that, and all of a sudden, the it seems as though these storehouses are completely unlocked, and we have this new revelation in our life. So I'd like to continue on this, a little bit of review from a past message when we look at our lives and exactly how God has made us, he designed us to be free. And we recognize, as it says in John 8, verse 36, if the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. We recognize that's the only freedom I really care about. People could give me freedom to do things, and that could, that could give me a certain level of opportunity here on the earth, that the fact that Jesus sets me free is, is the one freedom that really matters. And we recognize also, we looked at these, these scriptures in Acts chapter 13, where Jesus is talking to us. He is showing us the level of freedom that we have. We do not have to be bound to our mistakes. Acts 13 and verse 38 says, so listen, friends, through this Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is offered to you. Everyone who believes in him is set free from sin and guilt, something the law of Moses did not have the power to do. Now, recognize at the same time we have all of these opportunities in our identity, we have mindsets that are working against it. Notice that there is sin, which is the mistake that we're making, and there's also guilt. We feel guilty about the making of the mistake and perhaps even want to shove it down and hide it from people, and that guilt then grows into shame. <laughs> so none of that is healthy, but the truth here, what if it's true that we are completely freed from it? We're freed from the sin itself, we're free from the guilt. We're free from any form of shame. And see, these forms of sabotage do not need to have power over us. And so in Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, gives us another insight into this because we are no longer held back. And it says, now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus the anointed one, for the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. Now, if that is true, then the things that I'm experiencing, I may make a mistake here or there, but that thing is not going to hold me bound. It doesn't have the power to do that anymore because that voice of condemnation has become small. And that voice of identity that God is pouring out has become so loud and has become so real in my life that that condemning voice doesn't grip my heart anymore. Now, many of you may have experienced that, that there is a voice of condemnation somewhere in your life. Maybe someone disapproves of a choice that you're, you've made, a choice that you're in the process of making. And in the middle of that, you can choose how to respond. We look at these verses. If the case is closed, then why are we still in the middle of this battle, <laughs> right? The case is closed because there is no voice against us that has power. And we recognize that this is a higher law, the law of the spirit of life, right? It is much higher and much more powerful than any law of sin and death could ever be. And if you have experienced the goodness of God in your life, if you have experienced his presence, you know exactly what I'm talking about because you cannot compare to his goodness that is experienced by simply being in his presence. And so we 
when we're with him, we're not thinking about the condemnation and the mistakes and the failures. We lay that down. We say, Jesus, I give this over to you. And I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. And Jesus, I, I count on you to help refresh my heart, refresh my soul, that I can go on with my life and not be distracted by my mistakes. So this is now the pinnacle. This is the place. So if we are not held back by our mistakes, then who are we truly? And this is the main point of the message is Romans 8. We're going to read verses 36 to 39. And here it says, all day long, we face death threats for your sake, O God. We are considered to be nothing more than sheep to be slaughtered. Yet in the midst of all these things, we triumph over them for God made us to be more than conquerors. And his demonstrated love in our glorious victory over everything. So now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death, life's troubles, fallen angels, or dark rulers in the heavens. There is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us no power that can ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love, which he lavished upon us through the Lord Jesus, the anointed one. Now, there is so much to unpack in these verses, but I really commission you with this question. What if it's true? What if it's true that even though you could be at the point of receiving death threats. That that circumstance does not position you to be anything but a conqueror. Now, we know many stories in the Bible. King David, he had death threats all the time in his life, but he chose to trust in his God to get him through it. He sometimes he had to process his way through it to come to a higher mindset, but he always knew that God was able to rescue him, to save him, that he was made to be a conqueror. And we look at many other places and, and stories and scripture that we, we see people that come to such a low point in their life, and it looks like there's no hope. And then God comes in and rescues them from that situation. You know, we looked at Elijah when there was a time of famine in the land, and he, he talks with a widow, and, and the widow provides him with bread and oil, and the jar never runs out. It's just so amazing. We, we look at God continually supplies, even in those places where it looks like there's no hope, there's no supply. God is coming and he's rushing in and he declares that he has made us to be more than conquerors. And his demonstrated love for our victory over everything. <clears throat> now, I recognize that Many of you, you may be in a battle right now, and you don't feel victorious over it. You don't feel like a conqueror. But I want to assure you that if we take that thing and we lay it down on the table in front of you, you lay it down at the foot of the cross, you lay it down and, and hand it over to Jesus. And actually, as you're handing it over is to open up your hand and allow him, that's that thing that you're gripping onto and you're holding on to hope for it. And that as you lay it down, you realize that God is already a conqueror over it. And why? Why is he already calling us to be conquerors over it? And it's because of what it says in verse 38 and 39. You see, the power behind our ability to conquer 
is in the power of receiving his love. Verse 38, now I live with the confidence that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. Now, if what if that is true, that there is nothing, there is no power in the universe that separates us from God's love. Now, it might feel like it when somebody is treating you like a piece of trash. When somebody is saying lies about you, when someone is um, harming you, and perhaps that person's harming you physically, emotionally, that's tough. That's a tough position to be in. And, and if that is your place, my heart goes out to you. But let me tell you that there is nothing in the universe with the power to separate us from God's love. I'm convinced that his love will triumph over death. Now, how many of you have lost a loved one and it has, shake, it has shaken your life? It has caused a disruption in your life. I, I just saw a, um, a, a story yesterday on a son who was so distraught on the passing of his mom that it began to wreck his personal life. And there were some things that had to be let go. And you see, when this happens, when we recognize that there is a triumph over any circumstance, even death itself, that we find the truth of God's love to be real for us. And when I say that, I say that from the place there are times where I have believed that with all of my mind. Yes, God, your love is above everything else that I experience in my life. And I believe it up here. But what if that knowledge is to travel from my head down to my heart and for me to really, really know that this is true? that it is absolutely an, a fact, whether I feel like I'm experiencing it or not, that there is nothing in our present or future circumstances that can weaken his love. There is no power above us or beneath us. No power could ever be found in the universe that can distance us from God's passionate love which he lavished upon us through our Lord Jesus, the anointed one. You see, this mystery in itself carries so much hope. And I look back on my life and I grieve how there were times where I could not allow this message to be in my heart for the, the terrible thing that I was going through. And yet, if... I could hold on and believe that his love never ended. His love for me, his protection over me never ended through any of it. But it was my agreement with the condemnation that was brought against me. That is where I failed. And I, I look back in just different seasons of my life where these things have happened, but to recognize the truth still remains, that there is nothing that separates us from his love. We have never called anything but a conqueror in him. And so recognize today, we're standing in the middle of a great and precious promise because he allows us to make a decision. And you, you may recall in Matthew 5, 37, it says, but let your yes be yes and let your no be no. Whatever more than these is from the evil one. So let your yes be yes. In other words, make a decision and let that decision drive your life. Make that decision, not just with your mind. Make that decision with your heart. 
that you're letting go of anything that stands between you and receiving the fullness of God's love, that you are a more than a conqueror today. And if you can allow that to be real for you, to make that decision, I promise you, the rest of your life will never be the same. It's all about making that decision. And so when we recognize that new life that we have, it becomes powerful and it changes us in the rest of our life. <clears throat> and so regardless of where you've come from, I, I want to give you that hope today. So I have two questions. Uh, as, as we look into our lives, question one, in your life, what areas do you feel like a victim? So just take every thought that you have that you're feeling like a victim. And I just want you to, to, to take that out, possibly write it down, discuss it with your group as we go to breakout groups. And then question number two, despite how you feel like a victim, how is God lifting you up? How has he made you more than a conqueror above this challenge? So if you would just consider these thoughts, like you say, if you have a pen and paper, write something down because I feel like there's so much victory on the other side of this. If you can overcome and recognize you are not a victim. And if you can recognize also Revelation 22, verse 3, I'd just like to read this one. And it says, and every curse will be broken and no longer exist for the throne of God and the Lamb will be there in the city. You see, that is your portion, that every curse is broken, that you are living in the land of plenty and you are more than a conqueror.